Hello, everybody. It's so great to be here. My name is Liam Hampton, and I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. A really quick uh, agenda. So what is TinyGo? Why is it used? What have I made with it personally? And what am I doing next? So let's start with saying, what is Tiny's Go? It's a Go compiler for small places, as quite rightly stated on the readme on the GitHub and tinygo.org. So what does that really mean? It's a subset of libraries from the standard library in the core language package. And it's based on the LLVM compiler infrastructure, which is a collection of modular and reusable compiler and toolchain technologies. Now, hopefully my slide can illustrate this quite well. Uh, it is essentially cherry picks a number of really useful libraries from the main um, language, which you have to have installed prior to having it on your machine, such as IO, Bytes, Archive, Zip. And then it, it disregards things which are not necessarily seen uh, as important, like HTML templates or the net package. And this is purely because um, some of the 32-bit boards that you'll be using it on probably won't, you already won't be using it for that. Um, so let's have a look at the CLI. Uh, it looks very, very similar to the Go CLI, uh, very similar commands. So you have build, run, test, just with a few added extras like flash when you want to flash your board, uh, GDB, uh, and so on. It's, it's pretty similar, same from same. What is it used for? Well, people often use it for microcontrollers. And there's about 60 of them. It supports 60, more than 60 microcontrollers. Uh, Arduinos, BBC Microbits, Adafruit Playgrounds, and the X9 Pro Smartwatch is some of the ones which I've seen used the most. Um, they're really popular boards, and this is just a really fun way to get into IoT if you're a hobbyist like myself. It's also used with WebAssembly. Now, if you're not sure what WebAssembly is, then it is essentially lets you write your code, so in this instance, TinyGo, and pass it through a WASM compiler, which turns it into machine-readable code. Uh, and then when you go to run the application through the web browser, you can, well, it runs it because most web browsers support this. And from that, you get near native performance of your web app, which is fantastic. So where do I personally use TinyGo? I use it on Arduinos. Now, a little sidetrack here. Uh, I bought a bunch of Arduinos uh, thinking, cool, I'm going to run some home automation and Boy, was I stuck when it came to coding them because I didn't know C++ or MicroPython or anything like that. I, I don't use it in my day-to-day -day, uh, development. I use Golang. So I thought, light bulb moment, let's try and put Golang on a microcontroller, see what I can do. So to prevent my lovely houseplants looking like this, which uh, looks a bit scary, it's dying. In fact, that one's actually dead now. I created something like this. I created a soil moisture sensor. Um, and it takes some calculations. So it takes an input from the plant itself, takes it to the Arduino, does some cool calculations, uh, and then spits out some human readable output for me. That just essentially tells me I need to water my plant when it's getting thirsty. And it helps my plant look like this, which is over my shoulder. It's growing quite nicely behind me. Secondly, another really cool project I've made is a night light. Um, this is taking a photo uh, resistor and, and it start, when there's no lights, then obviously the lights come on. And when there is light, then the LED lights are off. For those that you want to see the boards, um, it's just a breadboard, an Arduino with a couple of resistors, a few wires and LEDs. Nothing exciting, but it's the principle behind what you stick in your garden at night uh, with those solar panels on top. The syntax looks really cool. It's exactly the same as Go. Uh, so you have, um, you've got your byte arrays, you've got your slices, you've got um, ranges. It's all the same syntax. It's really, really fun to get into if you know Go. So what next? What am I going to be creating next with Tiny Go? So for my soil moisture sensor, I'm going to be creating something which will let it water itself. So I've asked Santa Claus for a uh, water pump this year. Um, so I'll be able to implement this one and hopefully get that one going. For my nightlight, I am going to be implementing this in a letterbox, and that may seem a bit crazy. Um, however, for context, I live in a block of flats. And in the block of flats, uh, it's a real arduous task to have to keep running downstairs to check the post every day. So to prevent me from running down those stairs every single time I want to check the post, I'm going to be putting something that looks like that in my letterbox. Uh, and that will just tell me that when Postman Pat has been and uh, delivered his lovely post, 
then I will be able to uh, get a notification. And through that, hopefully using MQTT IoT Hub in Azure, I will be able to do just that. And there's a lovely little GIF uh, for you there. Secondly, there is a Tiny Go playground. Uh, so much like uh, Go, you can just go online and it's an online emulator. This will let you play with it. Uh, so sort of choose your hardware, your specifications, write a little bit of code, give it a go, uh, and off you go. I've actually written some pretty complex tasks on here where I have played with multiple boards, um, creating multiple little loops and lovely LED light shows just for a bit of fun. Uh, like I said, I'm an IoT hobbyist. I don't want to make the same mistakes I did previously where I buy a load of boards, don't know how to code them and stick them on there. So I thought I'd better give this a go. But um, yeah, I'm an IoT hobbyist and thank you very much for listening to my lightning talk. Um, if you'd like to get in contact, if you'd like to talk to me about this, um, in fact, if you're going to give this one a go, please do let me know. Um, and you can contact me on Twitter, GitHub, um, or contact us and watch some meetups through the Microsoft Reactor um, for my work. <laughs>